All right, welcome back for another Unreal video. Uh, in this one, we're going to be creating a simple health uh, system for our third person character, and then we're going to create a simple health pickup uh, that communicates with our character using what's called a blueprint interface. So we'll be briefly going over that. Uh, and this, we will use a couple of icons for our health pickup. Uh, this lightning one will be used in the next video also. If you want to download both of these, they're just super simple geometry. Uh, those will be in the description of the video. Uh, if you don't want them, you can use whatever geometry you want for your pickups. It's not a big deal. Uh, so getting started, I'm just going to go to my third person blueprints folder, uh, find my third person character, and open him up. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable for our player health. So I'm just going to make a new variable, call it player health, and we're going to set it to an integer type variable since we want uh, numerical values for that. So once we get that set, we're going to hit this compile button, uh, make sure we save that, and then we're going to need to go over to our blueprints folder, and we're going to create what's called a blueprint interface, which is uh, how one blueprint communicates with another. Well, that's one way, it's not the only way. Uh, so in this, I'm just going to right click. Uh, go to our advanced asset blueprints rollout and then create what's called a blueprint interface. And I'm just going to call this TP interface. Uh, TP for third person, so I just kind of know which interface to use with this. Uh, now, interfaces are one of the many ways blueprints can communicate to each other. Uh, you could think of it kind of like a bridge between them. And I'll be making another video that goes over a different way called casting, which some of you may already be familiar with. So with that interface created, I'm just going to double click it. Uh, you'll notice we actually can't do any edits to this graph. So again, think of this like a bridge between blueprints where we can only uh, call functions. So by default, we already have our first function created for us. I'm just going to double click that to rename it, or if you want to, you can just hit F2. Uh, and I'm just going to call this health change. Uh, and this is my way of handling this health change problem. You could create two functions, one for damage and one for health increase. Uh, completely up to you how you want to use this, but we'll just be doing it this way for simplicity's sake. Uh, so health change, and I'm going to add a couple of inputs down here in the details section. So I'm going to click that twice. Uh, the first one, I'm going to leave it as a boolean, and I'm just going to call it is damage. Uh, so what that'll do when we write our actual function in our character for this is it'll check to see if we want to increase or decrease our health. And then the second one I'm just going to call amount and we're going to change this to be an integer that matches our player health. Uh, and what we'll use that for is obviously changing our player health amount either negatively or positively. Uh, so with this function created and these two inputs also created we're going to click compile and save. And now we're going to need to create our actual icon that's going to drive uh, that essentially. So in this blueprint I'm just going to right click create a new blueprint class of actor and I'm just going to call this third person health pickup. So this is just our actor blueprint. I'm going to open this up. Uh, we don't need a lot to do with this so we're just going to add what we need. Uh, I'm going to add in static mesh since we want the visual and I'm just going to call it icon. Uh, and then I'm going to add what's called a box collision. Uh, that I'm going to use for my trigger, so I'm going to call it trigger. Uh, you can use the icon overlap if you really want to as the driving event. It's you know not wrong, it's not right, just however you get this called is personal preference. Uh, so I'm going to set this icon to that health icon right there. And then in this event graph, I'm going to go ahead and delete all these. I'm going to go into my trigger and then we're going to get our add component begin overlap event for that. <laughs> Alright, so now we actually have this event that's going to drive uh, the function message between our interface and our third person character. Uh, but one more step we need to do to actually call that function is we need to add that interface to this blueprint so that it knows what to do. So in the top bar of tools you'll see this class settings icon. We're going to click that uh, and over in the details section you see this interfaces section and right now we have no interfaces. So if we click this add rollout you'll see that we can find our third person interface, uh, add that to our interfaces and when we hit compile uh, we'll be able to find that function. 
Uh, now this is a little tricky finding this because we want what's called a message. So we're going to right click, I'm going to look for my health change function, uh, and then we're looking for our health change message, but we want it in our third person interface. So I have another interface created just I was playing around with, so I have that health change message, but you'll see this is in a game interface. It's not what I want. So you may need to uncheck context sensitive, uh, and then you'll see your TP interface rollout and you don't want what's called the interface call, you want what's called the message. So this is the important thing to look for. Uh, your target will be an object. Uh, and it will also have this little envelope on the right side, right? So you can think of it as sending a message. Uh, so I'm just going to hook up that execution pin, and then I'm going to hook this other actor up to it. Uh, now one more thing that's good to run on these is an is valid check. Uh, meaning maybe you trigger this but your character dies before this code gets executed which is highly unlikely but not uh, completely impossible so off this other actor I'm just going to go ahead and run is valid oh, make sure you have context sensitive rechecked after you've checked that and you can run uh, this kind of all in one node if you want to so I'm just going to run this is valid check and then if it is valid execute that health change uh, so that's relatively inexpensive node to run that should just be done on overlaps and triggers you're using a lot uh, just to make sure you actually exist in the world and this can get called. Uh, so now is when we overlap this, it's going to try to send this health change to the object we overlap, which will be our third person character and any other characters that overlap it. Uh, so what we need to do now is we want this to be a heal, so we're going to leave our is damage input you can see that that's exposed to us unchecked, so it's going to be health. And then the amount we want it to heal is up to you. You can drive this with a variable or change it uh, appropriately for any game type you have, but I'm just going to use 20 for demonstration purposes. So in the amount I just type 20, that'll send that int value of 20 to wherever this message is getting sent. Uh, next, I'm just going to go into this icon and disable collision, because I don't want that blocking me later on. So icon has no collision, this trigger just remains overlap all. And I'm just going to hit compile and save. And you'll see now we can kind of drag this out. And we'll add some rotation to this to just make it look a little better in game. So once that's out there, we need to go to our third person character and do some stuff. Because you'll see if we overlap it right now, it's actually not doing anything for us. So in our third person character blueprints, we need to enable the use of that interface within our third person as well. Uh, so very similar, we're just going to go to this class settings, uh, add this interface, third person interface over in our details section, and then hit compile so we have access to that. Uh, now instead of that function that we're going to look for, we're going to look for the event. So I'm going to look for my health change, uh, and then we're going to add this event health change. And uh, you want to make sure it says from the correct interface. So if you're running multiple interfaces, uh, which you know isn't a bad thing, it's very possible you can have your character interface and your game interface, anything you want to communicate between each other. So, uh, If you have multiple ones, just make sure you're it's from the proper interface you're looking for. Uh, so we're going to use this uh, boolean output to drive a branch. It's going to determine whether we do positive or negative health increase. Uh, and if this is true, it means we're going to take damage, right? So is damage true, take damage. Is damage false, heal us. So we're going to get this player health node, and I'm just going to control drag it to use a get node, and then I'm going to use an alt drag to get my set node really fast. Uh, so for the false, this is pretty simple. We're just going to do player health, use a int plus int uh, to search that really fast. You can just drag off this and hit the plus sign in your search bar. Uh, and then we're just going to add those amounts together and set that as our new player health. Uh, and if you have a max player health check, you can run that after this or before this gets set to make sure that you're setting it to whatever your max is, right? So uh, Now for this true node, we're going to do something very similar. Uh, however, we want to make sure our player health is set to the first input of our subtraction node. So I'm just going to use control drag and alt drag. And then our player health, I'm going to do minus integer, minus integer, and then plug in amount to that bottom pin. So we're subtracting the amount from our player health and then setting that. Uh, so we have this false pin kind of driving a health increase and this true pin uh, driving our health decrease. Uh, and then off of this you could obviously run a player health check where if it's less than zero destroy your player, but we're not going to worry about that right now. 
uh, just to see that this health increase is working I'm going to off of our uh, increase set do a print string and I'm going to print out our actual player health after it gets set to show that it actually is increasing so I'm going to hit compile and save and then we're going to close this and every time we run over our health node you'll see that it's print stringing our value plus 20 so by default we didn't set our player health to anything except 0 so it keeps incrementing of 20 alright so a couple problems you'll see is that the health thing the health pickup isn't actually disappearing which is a super simple fix we'll get to uh, and you'll also see that our character health started at 0 which maybe that's what you want for your game I don't know uh, but if you go into our third person character we'll just set our base health back to 100 hit compile and then in our health pickup in our blueprint section we're going to want to destroy this after this function gets called, right? So we pick it up, it checks, you know, we're there, we exist. It changes our health. Uh, now this should disappear in our game world. Uh, so off of this health change, we're going to drag and use a destroy actor node. And that will despawn it for us. That's it. going to hit compile, save. Uh, now when I run over this, my health should get set to uh, 120, and this should disappear. Alright, so that worked perfectly. Health uh, went up to 120. Uh, now we can kind of test the decrease function, right? So we go into our health pickup and we'll just set this is damage to true. And this will just kind of let us know that our decrease math is working also. So we hit that. Oh, why did that not decrease our health? Oh, we don't have our print string. I'm sorry. So it did decrease our health, we just didn't visually see it. So, my mistake, now we have a print string, now we'll visually see that our health actually does get decreased with that. Correct. Uh, so, very simple, make sure you change that back if you're using a health pickup to uh, not take damage. <laughs> make sure you don't leave that and then have your game all of a sudden everyone's dying when they're trying to heal. Uh, so that's very simple. Uh, next, this is kind of boring, right? We have our static icon just sitting there, super lame. So let's add some animation to that very simply, very quickly in our health blueprint pickup. And we're going to use our begin event to kind of initialize this. So we're going to right click, uh, add a begin play event, and then we're just going to right click, add a custom event, and I'm just going to call this icon rotation. Uh, super simple. And we want to make sure our begin play initializes that, so we're going to have our begin play call that icon rotation. Uh, next, we're going to drag out our icon, and we're going to use a simple move move component 2, not simple, so just move component 2, and plug in our icon rotation to move that. And for this icon, we're going to want to get our relative location and rotation. So I'm just going to use get location right here, uh, and get relative rotation. Uh, now we're going to want to add do some math to this rotation to make it uh, kind of less static. Uh, now what relative stuff is and why these variables kind of have these little balls on them and what's happening is that these are replicated by default so that anything that moves like this is kind of done in multiplayer for you. It's just a nice little back-end thing. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it. It doesn't mean anything different. Uh, now what relative space is is space inside the blueprint. So if we move this up uh, 500 units in blueprint space, that's its relative location. Uh, wherever we place that actor in the world will be its world location. So just kind of a brief overview of the difference. Uh, now for this relative rotation, I'm just going to use a break rotation like this and then a make rotation onto our move component. And I'm just going to do a yaw plus 180. So float plus float for our yaw value and I'm going to add 180 to it and I want this to happen over two seconds with no easing so it's just a constant loop of rotation I'm going to hit compile close this and now when we look at our health icon we'll see it spinning in our world right so that's a lot better than just kinda sitting there oh I also forgot to loop the function uh, so after this move component is completed you want to call this icon rotation again make sure we compile that 
and there we go so now we have our spinning icon loop uh, you can do lots of cool things with that you could change the height if you want to add like a bounce effect or maybe a little tilt effect by adding a different rotation value uh, completely up to you just a little more something that grabs the player's eye right uh, I think that's about it for this video uh, oh one more thing you'll see that we're constantly adding 180 here and some of you may worry well you might not I did I worried that it would just be constantly adding 180 to this value and let's say you put your health pick up in a level that's 15 minutes long uh, that's gonna be a very large number if it's you know adding 180 every two seconds for 15 minutes uh, but there's some nice behind the scenes stuff that happens and you can print string this out if you want to for proof uh, but once this icon hits 360 it actually resets the rotation values to zero so that you're only ever adding 180 to zero every time. Uh, so stick around, we'll go over some uh, speed pickups in the next video. We'll be using that lightning icon if you downloaded that. Uh, we'll be going over a different way that blueprints can communicate between each other. Uh, thanks for the video, see you next time.